About six months ago, I bought the iPhone 13 Pro. At the time, my number one priority was to find a phone with a great camera so that I could use it to make high quality videos quickly and efficiently. If the phone didn't let me do that, it would be a total waste of money. It would leave me with nothing but my old laggy iPhone 7 Plus, struggling to make videos well enough and quickly enough to give this YouTube channel any hope of growing. So, has the iPhone 13 Pro done what I'd hoped? Well, I made this video to explain why the answer is, unfortunately, no. While the phone's camera is fantastic, probably one of the best on any smartphone these days, I want to put a spotlight on some features of the camera that, if I'm being completely honest, have seriously disappointed me. These are features that no other reviewer is talking about and which are really important for you to know about if you're thinking of buying and using the iPhone 13 Pro for any kind of video content creation. So here is my experience of using the phone's camera. So when I film videos for this YouTube channel, which are mainly reviews of different tech products, I need two types of shots, product shots and footage of me talking directly to the camera. Let me say first that I think the iPhone 13 Pro does a great job when it comes to product shots, even if you just use the iPhone's built-in camera app and minimal post-processing edits. The in-app settings I've typically used for the shots are 1x zoom multiplier, 4K, and 30 FPS. Occasionally, I've dialed up to 60 FPS to capture footage on a display with a high enough frame rate, but in all cases, I really think the results have been fantastic. Crisp, smooth, and bright, provided there's enough light already in the scene. But let's talk about shooting the talking head footage with this phone now, because here is where things start to get a little more problematic. So when I'm shooting footage of myself in this setup you see now, I basically need a camera to capture two different things. First of all, a high resolution, so it looks clear for you on YouTube. And then secondly, visual depth. The second of those, depth, is really important because I need footage to give the impression of distance between myself and all this stuff that you see behind me in the background. So like the wall of my apartment, the bookshelf, the couch, the window frame, and all that kind of stuff. And that's because the depth makes the video so much more immersive for the viewer. Now, I didn't think either of these requirements was gonna be an issue. First of all, I knew the iPhone 13 Pro could film in 4K. So I thought, those images are gonna be fine. They're gonna be nice and crisp. And secondly, I knew something really cool about the iPhone, which is that it has a camera feature called cinematic mode, which emulates technology of a DSLR camera in order to blur the background of the subject that's on camera, really reinforcing a sense of visual perspective. So I tried this feature out, but unfortunately my expectations were completely wrong. So here was the first problem. Cinematic mode cannot film in 4K, it only goes up to 1080p. So right away, filming with this phone makes you choose between having depth on the one hand and then a really crisp image on the other. Now if I have this choice, I always choose depth over quality, but that is ultimately such a frustrating choice to make. It means I have to film different parts of one video in different resolutions. So the main footage of myself is in 1080p and then product shots are in 4K. And that ultimately means that the whole video just won't be as visually cohesive or as part of a single polished project as I want. But the headaches don't stop there because now we have to talk about the second problem. So when you're making a YouTube video like this one, filming is just one part of the process. You also need to upload video files onto your computer so that you can import your footage into an editing software like the one that I use, which is Adobe Premiere Pro. It's also worth noting that even if you don't want to edit videos you've taken, you might just wanna offload them onto your computer from your phone anyway, just to free up storage space. So here's the problem that I found. After filming in cinematic mode, transferring video files from the phone to a computer can take forever. And let me quantify that. So typically for a video that I make on YouTube that's between roughly eight and 10 minutes long, the raw footage of me actually talking to the camera will range from about 20 minutes to over an hour, which I then edit down to what you see uploaded. In order to transfer raw footage taken in cinematic mode to a computer, you first need to press a button on the phone that will quote, process the file. So for larger files that I've saved on my phone, they've taken sometimes upwards of two hours to fully process. And then transferring those larger files to a computer has taken around 10 to 20 minutes. So basically, the iPhone 13 Pro forces you to leave a time interval of two, maybe two and a half hours between filming cinematic footage that's around an hour long and then actually being able to import that footage into your editing software. That makes the whole content creation process so much longer and less time efficient than it should be. And I wish the problems ended there. 
If you use a Windows PC and editing software like Adobe Premiere Pro, then you've got other difficulties in store. Here's something that I experienced. After finally processing and transferring cinematic mode footage to my Windows laptop, I opened it and then even without importing it into Premiere, I played it and here's what I saw. All of the background blur had completely disappeared. And what's worse is that when I tried to import the footage into Premiere, I was then given an error message telling me that I just couldn't do it. I mean, can you believe that? At this point, I started scouring the internet to find out what was wrong. Was it a Windows iOS compatibility problem? Did the file somehow get partially corrupted when it was transferred or was it something else? I found a suggestion on an Apple forum in which somebody said that they had filmed a video in cinematic mode, then made an iMovie of that video, exported that iMovie onto their phone and then was able to transfer the new file onto their computer and import into Premiere with no problems and with the background blur still perfectly intact. So I tried that myself and fortunately it did work. So finally I could edit the video that I'd made with a sense of visual depth that I tried to create on the phone during filming. Such a relief. Except it wasn't a relief at all because I realized at that very moment that filming with cinematic mode is just not as quick and efficient to use as it should be with the iPhone 13 Pro. Having to create and export an iMovie of a video you've already filmed in order to even start the process of transferring it onto a Windows PC is just not good enough. It wastes so much time and it doesn't make the process of creating content as efficient as it should be. Because ideally, all you would have to do before importing your footage into Premiere is this. Shoot the video on your phone, plug it into your computer, and then transfer the file. But the iPhone 13 Pro just puts too many obstacles in the way of doing what should be pretty simple. So in the end comes the big question. Given all the difficulties and inefficiencies with cinematic mode, especially if you're a Windows PC user, should you use the iPhone 13 Pro for video content creation? So I think the answer really depends on what kind of creator you are. If you're someone that really needs to make content efficiently, you edit on a Windows PC with software like Premiere Pro, and you need decent background blur for your shots, then no, I don't recommend this device. There are just too many obstacles in your way. Instead, what I'd recommend doing is buying a much lower end smartphone for just very basic day-to-day -day tasks and using the money you save to buy a DSLR video camera that will do the job you need way easier. But if you're set on getting a smartphone that doubles as your content creation camera and you don't mind having to extend the process of making videos by a few hours here and there, then the situation is different and I have no problem recommending the iPhone 13 Pro. If you like this video, then make sure you leave a like and subscribe in order to catch my full review of the iPhone 13 Pro, covering way more than just the camera, which will be coming soon. To see my review of my favorite iPad case, click here. To learn more about the best productivity enhancement features of Apple devices, click here. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.